Hi friends, I'm out on a run, just getting back home and felt like I had to do this video. So I'm in the yurt because it is a, a super windy day as it often is up here on the ridge, which has made filming, well, a little more challenging over the last couple of years in the sense that inspiration strikes there's not an easy place to just go out and film i have to you know find a place where it's sheltered and in the woods there's these deep valleys and crevices around here so you can find sheltered places but still overhead boy those trees will be moving around and the wind will be howling through them so i have to plan things a little more carefully than i used to but at any rate i'm filming in the yurt today and it'll hopefully be a little bit more quiet, if not a bit echoey. Now, I have been hearing from so many people writing me at this point, saying that the current events in the world are feeling really overwhelming, and they can't seem to turn off the news cycle. Not you know, in real life, on the television or on the internet, but also not in their minds. And so today I would like to address that. And by the end of this video, I am hoping to convince you to even try a media fast. So let's get into it. Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. All right, if there's one takeaway that you get from this video, hopefully it is remembering the simple thing. And that is that being stressed out about something is not useful towards solving that thing, that problem at all. In fact, being stressed out about something in general, the only thing it's doing is harming you because stress is really bad for you. And I know you can get stressed about being stressed, but we can learn to release this. I'm gonna help you out with it today. All right, we are all aware of the current goings on in the world. And if we have a good memory, we'll remember that just before this, all the media was focused on something else, the pandemic. Before that, there were, there were other things, right? And as far back as we want to look, there tends to be always an emergency. Now, my girls are reading a great series of books called the Benedict Society. And in this, it's a group of kids, I think, that are always kind of saving the world. I haven't read them. But the author did something pretty genius. And that is that the, the big problem that they're facing is something that's constructed essentially by the media, which is the emergency. Nobody quite knows what the emergency is, but the media is always talking about it and it's always there and it's always stressing people out. And it gets us to act in very specific ways because when we are fearful, we act very, very differently than we are, well, we talked about it in a recent video. If we are lodged in our amygdala, our actions as a human being are gonna be very, very different than when we are in our prefrontal cortex. This is the difference between reactive living and response-based living. So let's look what's happening. A lot of us are experiencing this and feeling this. I have felt the draw too. The draw is to sit down and to watch the media, maybe for hours a day. And the media is saying, emergency, emergency, emergency. Now, I don't have a television, so I get only snippets, but once in a while I sit down and I go through all the major 
news channels. And it doesn't matter if it's CNN or if it's Fox or it's Newsmax or BBC, whatever you want to look at, they're all giving the emergency. And it's continually running. It goes all day. I think with modern television, you could sit down and literally watch it all day long. And the thing is, it's not that there aren't emergencies. It's not that there aren't big, tough things going on in the world. And there always have been. But if we focus in on that in a, on a constant basis, it will destroy our ability to be here for the life we're living. And unfortunately, that fear sells. So <laughs> I was reading some history of journalism way back after World War I. So if I'm getting this right, I was absorbing a lot of information. But there were these two newspapers that started kind of going at each other and it's where the term yellow journalism was, was term created. And what that term means basically is that the, the different news medias are trying to out sensationalize each other. Imagine you're walking down the road in you know, the street in the 1940s in New York and you see one of the major newspapers and big splashy headlines that says, yesterday was a really good day for New York. Everything went pretty darn well. And then you see the next newspaper and it says, 50% of New York's skyscrapers are in danger of toppling. Danger, alert. Which one are you gonna buy? Well, for a lot of people, you see that, it triggers your fear, that alert. 50% of the buildings are gonna fall on me tomorrow? And I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna read that. Yesterday may have been a really good day in New York. In fact, today might be a really good day in New York, but I'm not going to experience that because my mind is gonna be lodged in this person's idea of what could happen and what's wrong. Over and over again, I think we have to remind ourselves that you know, life falls apart, people die. Yes, we have wars, things, bad things happening all the time. Those skyscrapers, they may be in tough repair and some of them, maybe one will fall tomorrow. Probably not 50%, but one of them may fall tomorrow. But being stressed out about it is not gonna prevent it from falling. Being stressed out about it is not going to make the world or me better or happier in any way. Now I can tune into media enough to be aware. So in today's events, I can see what's going on in the world and I can be prepared for what might befall me, my family, my community. And then I have taken some meaningful action but it doesn't take a lot of time on the media to get a, a decent idea of what's going on. Now, you probably have noticed this yourself, but most of mainstream media is what I call soothsayers. That's an old term for fortune tellers. And we see this rife on, on a lot of YouTube channels too. People making continual predictions about what's going to happen. And if you look back on their YouTube videos, you'll see all kinds of predictions that have not come true. Maybe they got a couple right here and there, but the majority of them have not come true. And yet these folks will continue to predict and predict and predict because they know that if they make doomsday predictions, that will trigger our fears and we will come back for more. Yesterday, the newspaper said 50% of the buildings are gonna fall. The next day, famine is imminent. The next day, horrible storms are coming. That's the newspaper I'm going to come back to again and again, because it's making these predictions. And our mind isn't really good at noticing that those predictions don't come true. It just is good at reacting. 
at least the amygdala part of our mind, at reacting, oh my gosh, now this is going to fall apart. Oh my gosh, now this is going to fall apart. There's always an emergency. And this just sells. It sells really well. Somewhere along the line, we absorb this illusion that if I sit there and I watch the news, I'm somehow doing something good. I'm somehow benefiting the world or myself. Even though it's playing the same thing over and over, I could watch it for maybe, let's say, a half hour, an hour, and I'm going to get that day's news. But the illusion is that if I keep watching it and I keep hearing the same thing over and over, of course, they have to fill the time on the news channels with the soothsayers coming in and saying, well, here's what I think is going to happen, and here's what you have to be prepared for, and here's what this and this and this. It's just people's opinions and ideas and predictions, and none of them are really that good at predicting. Some of them might get something right, because again, the bad things do happen, right? But to sit there and make that our mental diet, it is not helping. There's really literally nothing beneficial about sitting and watching that hour after hour after hour. This is part of our culture, that if we sit there passively, we get this illusion that we're helping. But action is what helps. If we are concerned about a situation in the world, why aren't we getting on a plane and going over there and helping with our hands, with our mind, with our feet? If we are concerned about the world in general, maybe I could take some of that energy I'm going to watch the news for three hours today. Let's say I'm going to cut it back to one hour. Now I have two hours free. And where can I actually do some good for the world? Can I step out and help a neighbor? Can I do some research and find some places in my hometown where people are in need of food and go and buy some groceries and take it to a family or take it to the food shop? Can I go volunteer walking dogs at the local Humane Society? Can I go do a trash cleanup? Can I take that time and energy and actually use it to do something good? And in fact, sometimes doing something good is just paying attention to the people around me. Those two hours where I would have stared at a screen, can I talk to a person in my family, have a meaningful conversation with them, can I call somebody up and tell them I love them? Can I write a letter to somebody and send it in the mail? Knowing the smile that's going to create when they get something <laughs> in their mailbox and open it up. And they know they've been thought about. These are uses of our time that are really worthy of us. That create good in our lives and in the world around us does not mean we have to be ignorant of what's going on in the world. But I would suggest if you're just watching those, those mega corporation news channels, that you take some of that time that you would have used in just hearing the soothsayers say emergency over and over, and check out some other things. Paleo Greenberg was talking about uh, some of the news you can find on YouTube, online. And you know that has its own issues, but you can see, if you're interested in the war, you can see footage that people are taking on their camera. And that gives you a different kind of news, an old type of news where people just reported what was happening instead of attaching all their opinions and their slants onto it. So, now I have that hour that I was going to watch the news. Maybe I've cut that to a half hour to just watch the big news cycle. And then I'm going to go online and get some other news and think about that for myself. Instead of just absorbing someone else's slant, I'm going to look at this and say, what do I think of this? And now I'm taking those other hours that I was going to do any kind of news intake, and I'm using those to do something good exercise, meditate, make a good meal, anything that is going to actually 
be good for ourselves and the people around us. This is pretty vital, my friends, that we recognize that the media will feed us the emergency forever. It will just keep coming. The emergency will always be there because it's so profitable to feed on our fear. It will be there until enough of us don't tune into it anymore. And we start to see through this. We say, okay, I'm gonna use the news for the news. I'm gonna absorb just enough of it to be informed. I'm gonna get it from different sources. If you're watching the news, you guys, it's really important that if you are a Fox viewer, that you're watching what the liberal networks are saying. And if you're a liberal network viewer, that you're watching what Fox and the others are saying. So take that half hour that you're gonna use watching your news channel, now divide that in half. And watch 15 minutes, and I bet, you know what, in 15 minutes you're still gonna get everything you need to know about the world from your chosen perspective. And then, spend 15 minutes, the other 15 minutes, on the opposite view, the opposite slant, and see what they're saying. And you might be interested to see there's odd similarities and there's odd discrepancies. And it's gonna to start to show us that the news is not so much about the news, it's about people's opinions. And the things that are similarities, you're probably gonna notice, are often the alert, the emergency, the continued fear that all of these are peddling. So if you are trying to absorb less of this fear from the news cycles, that's how you do it. Remember that vital part that sitting there on a couch watching a screen is not doing good for the world. It's not doing good for you or your health. It's not doing good for anybody. It's taking your personal life energy that you could be using for positive things and just eating it up, turning it and transmuting it into fear, into stress and anxiety. And we are responsible, right? This is responsibility. We are playing a part. We are saying, here's my life energy, this precious thing that I could be using to volunteer, to tell somebody I love them, to do something amazing in the next hour, and I'm giving it unto you, CNN, Fox, whoever you are, and I'm giving it to you so you can take that beautiful energy and you can transmute it into fear. And then you can put it back into me so that I become not a person of action, trying to do things around me, but just a person who is frozen in fear and anxiety. This is powerful stuff. So many of you have written to me and you have fallen prey to it. I have fallen prey to it at times. So I understand. It is powerful. The fear is strong. But we must stop giving our life energy unto these forces that would turn it into fear and put it back into us, transmute it into fear. There's nothing good about that. So here are the suggestions I would make to you. Either A, if you are watching the news and you just feel that you have to, watch the big news for just a half hour a day. Tune out the soothsayers. They're just spouting their own fantasies. It's really just like fantasy masturbation of fear is <laughs> all it is. And we're watching them do that on the screen. They should be embarrassed and we should be embarrassed that we're just sitting there watching their opinions because we're giving them that energy. So tune out the soothsayers, listen to the news portion of the news and divide that half hour in half, 15 minutes with the news cycle that is your favored viewpoint and then 15 minutes of another viewpoint. Notice what's different in the reporting. Notice what's similar in the reporting. And that will tell you some things. 
Then take a half hour, go onto YouTube and try to find some independent news sources. Try to find some people just showing what's happening in the areas of the world where you're concerned. Again, here's some other opinions. Be wary of the bias bubble that is created by our media, where we're just hearing the same voices, the same opinions over and over until that's what we think is the truth. We're not going to be able to know what we think unless we are seeing not only opinions that are completely divergent, but also we're seeing more of the raw information for ourselves and making our own deductions about what's happening. And then take all the rest of the time that you are going to use watching the news and say, how can I take this life energy, this next two hours of life energy, how can I do the most good with this? And you can find ways to do good. It is as simple as sitting down and writing a letter, donating to something that you think is worthy, giving your time or energy consciously. And if you feel really brave, I'm going to suggest that this is a good time right now where the emergency bells are on high alert to take a day-long media fast and to see how you feel. And you could just take one day or you could say, you know what, I'm going to take one day fast, then I'm going to intake media for two days, and then I'm going to do one day fast, or it could be every other, whatever you wanted. But notice what it's like to take that media fast. And there's two kind of important things you might notice. The one is how it feels to be without it. And it may feel like you have a driving need to look and see what's happening and question that need. Is that need yours or is that a manufactured need? An addictive need? Does it feel positive? like you feel when you see a plate of broccoli and it beckons to you with its healthiness? Or does it feel like an addictive need when you see that whatever your junk food is, the chips or the cupcake or whatever it is for you, and you feel drawn to it, drawn to it like you can't stop yourself. So notice that feeling of going towards it. And also notice This might be more difficult to see because that drawing towards it can be very, very powerful. But see what it feels like to be without it. Do you feel a certain freedom? Do you find that you have hours, hours of life energy, precious life energy to do something with? Do you maybe feel bored because you're not getting that hyper stimulation? We start to see what this news is like when we start to understand hyperstimulation and how that works. If you've ever spoken to someone who's addicted to porn, they need that hyperstimulation that comes with seeing these hypersexualized scenes over and over. Without that, life feels kind of empty and dull. And that hyperstimulation, it's the same thing the hyperstimulation of the porn, same mental processes that are being invoked with that hyperstimulation of our modern version of news. It is addictive. Just like the porn, it will draw people in and it will be all they can think about sometimes and it will devour their life energy until there is very little left to give to this moment, to the people around us. It essentially takes our ability to act and strips it away from us. So like all things technology-wise, I am not suggesting throw out the news. This is not baby with the bathwater. Instead, we can let this technology, whatever it is, use us or we can use it. And ideally, our technology, whether it's fire, whether it's a knife, 
whether it is a camera, phone, or whatever it is, news media, YouTube, these are here to enrich our lives. We can use them consciously in really positive ways. So the news is not inherently bad. It just becomes bad when it uses us and it devours us. So right now, while we have this blaring red light emergency going on, this is a perfect moment to stop and to see what your relationship is with this particular technology, the news media technology. This is a perfect moment to change your relationship with it, to start using it to inform yourself, but not to eat you up. It is not something we need to give our life energy to. Take what we need and then take our life energy and use it for goodness. Okay, my friends, I hope you found value in this and I know it's tough. For those of you that have been writing, I know it's tough. I want you to know that I'm with you, both in understanding how difficult it is and in believing in you. That you can make this shift. And you know what, if enough of us made this shift, these giant news conglomerates would have to change the way they report because we just wouldn't intake the soothsayers. We wouldn't intake the emergency, the fear. When we see over-dramatization, we would just turn it off. Oh, my friends, thank you for watching. Thanks for being on this journey with me. My heart goes out to you if you are feeling that super stress and anxiety of everything right now. But try this out. You can make changes especially when you take that energy and you use it for conscious good, you're going to start to redirect yourself out of the amygdala into your prefrontal cortex. Life is going to feel a lot different. And as we all know, tomorrow, it could be the end. It could be nuclear war. It could be a, an impact from outer space. It could be the aliens come. Who knows? <laughs> But we don't know what tomorrow brings. So let's live today the best we can. Because there's a pretty good chance tomorrow we'll still be there. And then tomorrow it's going to be very important as well that we live that day and make the world a slightly better place. Each one of us, this is our responsibility. Every day, make the world a little bit better if we can. And then the power of our actions ripple out and, well, we'll get to see what happens. Love to you all.